Welcome back. Okay, so this is the second part of, uh, uh, or maybe the third part of solving differential equations numerically. This is for chapter five, section 5.2.4. We're going to look at the same example on equation 5.6. This time we're going to solve it using trapezoidal rule. So this is the equation we're going to look at. The initial condition is five and dy dt is equal to some function of time and y. The question is we want to find y using trapezoidal rule. So in trapezoidal rule the the left side again is discretized pretty much like forward or backward euler it's yn plus one minus y n divided by h but the right side is a bit different so it looks like every time we you we look at a different uh, technique to solve the differential equation the left side is pretty much like y n plus one minus y n divided by h so we never change left side that's the right side that always changes in forward euler right side was f of y n t n in backward euler it was y n plus one and t n plus one in forward in in trapezoidal rule it's the average of y n plus one well, f of y n t y n plus one t n plus one, and f of y n t n. So it's pretty much like average of the two Euler's method, the backward and forward Euler's math. Okay, so now we're going to look at how we can do this using uh, trapezoidal rule. Okay, so let's jump directly to the example we had before. Okay. The left side is y n plus one minus y n divided by h as before. Now the right side is one half. We need to evaluate the right side of equation 5.6 using n plus one and y n t n. So that means we have to evaluate this right side two times. First, we're going to plug in y n plus one t n plus one. Then we're going to plug in y n and t n, and then we get the average. Okay, and that's what we have. Here on equation 5.15. So this is y n plus 1 minus y n divided by h. This is f of y n plus 1 t n plus 1. And this one is f of y n and t n. And subtract this from that. There's a negative sign here. And uh, I'm sorry, this plus that. Okay, so this is, y, this is f of y n plus 1, this is f of y n, you just add them and get an average. Okay? So what is the unknown here? The unknown is always anything beyond y n. If you know y n, that means we know y n, and anything before that. That's how we solve differential equations numerically. We're, we're, we're going to sit at, we're going to sit at some point and say, if I know this point and any point before this, how can I calculate the points after this? Okay. And there's a reason to do that because we always start from initial condition. For initial condition, that means we know everything from the first point, how we can calculate the second point. Now we're going to sit on the second point and say, I know the solution of the second point and first point. How can I calculate the solution at the third point? And we're going to go and sit on point, the third point. And then ask, I know the solution. Uh, for the first point, I know the solution for the second point, I know the solution for the third point, what is the solution for the fourth point, right? So we always look ahead and, else, and ask ourselves what is going to be the solution for the point ahead of ourselves. And this is exactly what we do here. We assume that y n plus 1 is the only unknown here. Everything else, anything with index n or lower will be known. So let's see here. I have 1 n plus 1 here, another one here. So I'm going to group these two so it becomes you multiply through by h you add them up so you get one from here and one half times h times 20 and that's minus 10 you move it to the left side because plus 10 gets one plus 10 h times y and one plus one okay so that's the only or these are the only one plus one we have the, the uh, all other ones on the right side uh, are y n t n or t n plus 1. Well, t is known always, right? So we know the value of t, t is, are the values of the time that we discretize. So there's nothing unknown about t. Even n plus 1 
uh, or even the higher indices. The only again I know, as I said, is the Y with higher indices than M. Okay. So anyways, uh, now we can evaluate this at y n. Then we solve for y n plus one because we uh, can just go ahead and divide this right side by one plus ten h. Okay. So and we're gonna in, we're gonna decrease h by a factor of ten again to see how much error goes down. All right. So let me jump directly to the spreadsheet and show you the solution to that. Okay. So we're gonna look at. This time, trapezoidal rule again. This is the t, and we discretize it from zero to 0.1. We just get the separation of 0.01. That's the error. That's the exact solution we knew from before. This is the initial line. The only part you have to calculate is this cell. So let's look at that. It's one minus uh, in one minus ten times h, which is the blue cell, times b3, which is y n. If you if you're doing this cell, that means that means this is y n plus one. The green cell is going to be y n. So this is 1 minus 10 h y n. Okay, so let's compare that with the result we got from here. So, uh, so y n plus 1 is equal to uh, y n, right, divided by 1 plus 10 h. Just double check that we're doing this correctly. So this is one plus ten h downstairs, and have a coefficient of one minus ten h also times y. And so let's see if yes. Okay. So right so there's one in here and then there's another minus 21 in there we can group them as well it becomes one minus 10 h right so one half times minus 20 that's minus 10 h so that's what it is right that's what i have here and then plus seven times exponential of minus 0.5 t n plus one so this is uh seven times h over two and then times the exponential of minus 0.5 tn plus one which means the purple not the orange if this is n plus one row this purple one is going to be tn plus one okay and then times the exponential of minus 0.5 tn which is now the the brown cell okay and then all of them divide by one plus 10 h that's exactly this equation so we implemented this right here and now you're going to hit enter and just drag this guy down that's it and the rest is just calculated it uh, appropriately. Okay, now we can go ahead and redo this analysis for smaller h. Uh, we're going to lower it by a factor of 10, again by another factor of 10, and then we just plot everything on, on here and see that they're very close. I mean, even now uh, delta t of 0.01 is very close to the other ones. And similarly, they're almost close to the exact solution. So the exact is, by the way, this third column. Okay, so let's look at the error analysis. So here's the error. I'm just plotting the error. This is the error against time. And this is the log of scale. And then uh, the blue is for dt equal 0.01, red is 0.001, and dt for the green is 0.0001. So every time we go by factor of 10 down. So I compare the solution. This time, by lowering the h by factor of 10, the error from blue to red goes down by a factor of 100. The difference from here to here is 2 in the log scale, so, right? The difference between every uh, every line here is 1 unit in the log scale. So 2 lines would be 2 units in log scale, which means 100. So that means you get the blue line, you divide by 100, you get the red, you divide by another 100, you get the green. So that means trapezoidal rule is second order approximate for the, for, the, for the differential equation because the error goes down proportionally or proportional to h squared, right? So we lowered h by a factor of 10. The error goes down by a factor of 10 to the second power, 100, right? So error is proportional to h squared. And because the power of h is 2, we call this second order approximation 
So trapezoidal ruler is more accurate than the forward or backward Euler. Backward and forward Euler both were first order. Okay, I hope this is clear. Okay, so that's about trapezoidal rule. I think in the next uh, few minutes I'm going to talk about um, the stability analysis. Let me close this. All right, so that is now I have to go back. Uh, to section 5.2.2, which is the stability analysis of the numerical solution of ordinary differential equations. Okay, so for stability analysis, we focus on a very specific problem, and that is the first order time derivative of y is equal to minus a times y. This is a very, this is like a toy problem, and that toy problem actually gives us a very good indication of how stable the numerical method is specifically for forward Euler and backward Euler's method. So let's look at this this problem if we solve this using forward Euler. Okay, assume that we have this problem and the initial condition is 1 at t0. I'm going to go ahead and, and solve this first of all analytically. We know the exact solution to this. If you remember from calculus, the exact solution is exponential of minus a times t, because if you substitute it in there, you can see that the differential equation is satisfied, as well as the boundary condition. Okay, fine. So, so well, how does this exact solution help us? Well, we solve this using forward Euler, and then compare the exact solution and see how much error we're making. Okay, so if you solve this using forward Euler, you discretize the, the left side as y n plus 1 minus y n divided by h, and then right side would be at y n, right? Then you solve for y n plus one, we get this. So this is nothing but the sol the solution to the forward Euler of equation five point eight. Okay, so let's look at that. We know the f we know from the exact solution that the solution is a decaying function, right? Imagine a is positive. If a is positive, as t goes up, the exponential of a negative of that goes down, right? So y goes down as t goes up. Let's look at the approximation here. This is y n plus 1, this is y n, right? This point is ahead of that. So if that a is positive, right? Let's say my a times h, if this thing, right, is is or let me put it this way if one minus time one minus a times h if this factor is bigger than one what happens if this is bigger than one that means y n plus one is bigger than y n similarly y n plus two is going to be bigger than y n plus one and then y n plus three is bigger than y n plus two so it looks like our y is going to grow if 1 minus a times h is bigger than 1, y is going to grow. And this is in contrast to the exact solution, because the exact solution was y goes down as t goes up. Right? That means as we go forward again along the time axis, the next y should be smaller than the current y according to the exact solution. But the approximation says yn is bigger than yn, which means y is going up, if a1 minus a h is bigger than 1. So let's ask the question, can that be the case? Can 1, one minus a h be bigger than 1? Well, a is positive, h is also positive. Uh, so then, what if a times h is bigger than, let's say, 2? Okay, let's say a times h is 3. Okay, a is positive, h is positive 2, but then let's say a times h is bigger than 3. So then 1 minus h is minus 2. Well, uh, forget about the sign for now. The magnitude of a is 2, so every time you calculate yn plus 1, you multiply the, pre the previous one by a factor of minus 2. So magnitude-wise, it's going to go up, right? And that is in contrast to the exact solution. That means we're making a lot of error. And that is what we mean by stability. It looks like the method is not stable if 1 minus h is bigger than 1, and that's the condition right here. We need 1 minus h to be less than 1, actually, the absolute value of it, which means a h should be between 0 and 1. Okay, so we're going to continue this in the next section.
for stability analysis.